Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be reviewing the Tifosi Slip Sunglasses. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO84. So, protecting your eyes while you're riding is, I think, one of the most underrated parts of cycling safety. I think a lot of people kind of overlook this detail. Um, You know, it's easy to think about helmets and reflective gear so that other people can see you but um you know if you if you can't keep your eyes open while you're uh, out there on the road if you can't see what's around you um then you're kind of hosed so i bought these sunglasses way back in 2012 uh, and they are not sold anymore hence the uh the label of post-mortem on this review um but uh yeah i think that uh, there's there's a lot of things that I've noticed about these sunglasses that can definitely be used as lessons for what to look for uh, when uh, when buying sunglasses in general. So these sunglasses were definitely uh, designed for cycling. They're they're marketed as cycling sunglasses. Um, I did not honestly buy them because of that. I just happened to be an REI and uh, and I was looking around for sunglasses because I was working as a lifeguard during uh, the summer of 2012 and I thought that these ones looked cool and uh, so I bought them. So the uh, the little things that it does um, that uh, are really meant for cycling specifically is uh, the the shape of the lenses. Um, they're kind of designed to like sweep the wind away from your eyes, and they do a really good job of that. Um, they kind of wrap around like the sides of your head a little bit to to you know give you that extra protection from uh, not just wind, I suppose, but also like small little uh, pieces of of particles that uh, that might fly at your eyes. They also have interchangeable lenses, which I was very surprised about when I bought them. Um, I literally thought that I was just buying some polarized sunglasses, Um, but uh, the the ones that I bought uh, came with three lenses in the case. Um, It had a, a polarized lens for sunny days. Uh, a like rose tinted lens for cloudy days um, and I have noticed uh, while wearing them that uh, they, they do refract light a little bit differently than than just a you know a regular tinted lens um, you don't notice that refraction so much when you're just wearing them on like a cloudy day as you're supposed to um, but I have noticed if I'm like wearing them and it's like raining out um, and I've got cars coming towards me with their headlights right i see like kind of ghost images of those headlights just to the left and right of the headlights themselves so it is doing some sort of weird refraction of the light Uh, and then also i got a uh, yellow tinted lens for like when you're in the dark or for just when you're using these as like safety lenses um for doing i don't know woodworking or something um I honestly didn't get much use out of the yellow tinted lenses until I started biking as like my primary form of transportation because that's when I started uh, getting out and about after after the sunset uh, more often. Um, And I think for for that usage case, I would prefer to just have like just straight up clear lenses uh, rather than yellow tinted lenses. And I could buy myself some like clear lenses because Tifosi does sell individual lenses on their website, um, and uh, the ones that like are not polarized are fairly cheap. Uh, but honestly, like I don't know, I've already got these yellow tinted ones, and they're working out, you know, just fine. So I probably won't go and buy uh, buy a different color just to replace those. There is one cycling usage case that uh, I don't think that these glasses really handle very well, uh, and that is during the winter, if it is cold enough for me to be wearing like a balaclava or a scarf over my nose or something, right, and like the the humidity from my breath is being directed upwards, um, these glasses do fog up uh, when I am stopped. Um, so while I'm while I'm biking, while I'm moving, uh, it's not so much of a problem because the the uh, my breath gets uh, swept away from my face enough. Um, but uh, so I've had to get into like the habit of taking off my sunglasses whenever I stop at a red light or something like that, and then slipping them back on when. And I start going again. 
And that's, you know, it works. It's not a perfect solution. So I'm still trying to come up with like a, a really good permanent solution for for what to do, what to wear uh, in like on in, on really, really cold days. Like I said earlier, the uh, the aesthetic of these glasses is really what drew me to them initially. Um, they look pretty aggressive. Um, they're not as extreme as like a pair of pit vipers, um, but I definitely consider that to be a good thing. Um, I think that they kind of hit that uh, that happy medium uh, that I'm looking for. So they definitely work like on my face. Um, you know, you'll you'd want to uh, probably try them on before before you know actually buying them to really get a sense for like whether they work for the aesthetic that you're going for. Um, but I'm really happy with the way that they look. Finally, let's talk about uh, longevity. So I bought these sunglasses because I kept like losing or breaking the cheap $5 pairs of sunglasses that I was buying. Uh, and I was going through a lot of those cheap sunglasses because I was working uh, as a lifeguard during that summer. And so um, I don't know, I don't remember if I was mostly breaking them or mostly just losing them. Um, but yeah, I, I decided, hey, I need to do something about this. I need to go and buy myself like a more expensive pair of sunglasses that not only will be a little bit more durable, but also that like because they are more expensive, I will care about them more. And so I will probably uh, put, put in more effort to like not lose them. And I think the, the big thing that these sunglasses do to really serve that longevity goal is that they come with a carrying case. And I know that's not like a huge revolutionary thing, um, but like this was the first uh, pair of sunglasses that I had ever bought that actually came with a carrying case. Um, so I'm much less likely to lose them. I'm much less likely to break them. Um, the carrying case itself uh, did start to kind of go downhill after a couple of years, like the zipper primarily um, started having trouble after about two years uh, of, of me owning these uh, sunglasses um, but honestly like the case still serves its purpose even without a functioning zipper um, because I when I put my sunglasses in them and then I put the case in uh, my bag like the other stuff that's in the bag holds the case closed and uh, so I don't really need to worry about my sunglasses getting crushed um, and my sunglasses always have like a proper place where they go right they go in the case and then the case goes in the bag and so then I never ever lose them the hinge screws on the glasses did start to loosen every once in a while, um, but that's a pretty easy thing to fix. I just have to take a small screwdriver to tighten them up again, and then uh, it's pretty much as good as new. Um, after about six years of owning these sunglasses, the ear pads had really pretty much disintegrated and had like fallen off. The, uh, the glue had failed and, and wasn't holding them on anymore. Um, and surprisingly like that wasn't the end of the world um the the sunglasses like they still stayed on my head they weren't like terribly uncomfortable even without that like rubber rubber padding um so i just kept wearing them um also after about six years the like polarized lenses uh had gotten pretty scratched up um the other two lenses that i had were doing just fine because um i i you know i ended up wearing the polarized lenses way more often than the other two lenses um and both of those things uh, are, are problems that I easily could have solved um, because Tifosi actually sells replacement parts for the ear pads, nose pads, and the lenses um, through their website. You can just go on there and, and order replacement parts, which is really cool. Um, and then also something that I discovered kind of by accident. Uh, you, If you call them up uh, through like the, the phone number that's on their website, um, they will probably be able to like sell you a brand new frame um, if you either lose the frame or break it or something like that. And, uh, and I know this because I've done it twice so far. So the first time um, I lost my frame and polarized lenses after like seven years of having these sunglasses. Um, and because like when I lost them, I, I just lost the, the, the frame and the polarized lens that I had been wearing, but I still had my uh, rose tinted lens and my yellow lens in the case in my bag. And so I was like, well, I don't really want to like 
throw these out and buy a brand new, you know, like separate sunglasses. So I just went and ordered a new um, polarized lens and uh, and frame from Tifosi. Um and then also uh, about six months after after I had bought those replacements, uh, I damaged the new frame. Um, the hinge uh, was you know super duper loose after dropping them on the ground, um, and so I bought a replacement for that frame again. So yeah, I'm very happy with the longevity that I've gotten out of these uh, sunglasses and that I continue to get out of them, um, partially because the sunglasses themselves are pretty sturdy, but also because the company uh, supports them long term. All right, so final thoughts on the Tifosi slips. I am very happy with these glasses. Um, they look good, they perform well, they're useful in a variety of different contexts, and also the company supports their longevity um, even after discontinuing the model. It's not sold in stores anymore, but they still have the replacement parts and everything available uh, through their own website, which is pretty awesome. So those are definitely some of the features that I'll be looking for uh, if I ever have to uh, buy new sunglasses. Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion Reviews. I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. This episode of Second Opinion is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any or all of it as you see fit, uh, as long as you link back to the original page, which is thenexus.tv slash SO84. This is the first uh, review of some cycling-specific gear, and uh, I'm planning on doing more of these, um, you know, all the way from panniers to entire bike builds um, and uh, and also just general like outdoors uh, equipment um, kind of shifting towards that as we get uh, into the uh, spring and summer months so be sure to subscribe to second opinion reviews in your favorite podcast player to uh, catch all of those episodes in the future if you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, you can do so on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make technology-focused podcasts, you can do so on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence. Technology is ever evolving. It touches every part of our lives, both influencing and being influenced by society. I'm Ian Arbuck, and I know it's hard to stay on top of everything you need to know to live in this digital world. That's why every month on the Extra Dimension, we explore a different aspect of the technological convergence. Find it on our website, thenexus.tv, or by searching for The Extra Dimension in your favorite podcast player.